what we're going to look at today, which ties back into what Mike talked about, which is headlines. He uses headlines as a way to just reach out to his prospects, almost like he's a beacon or a lighthouse, and just pull them into him. Which, your headline, as Mike mentioned earlier, is going to be like the most important part of your ad. Because, as it says there, and this is based on David Ogilvy's observations, that five times as many people, they're going to read your headline instead of the ad. So if you don't get your headline of your advertisement right, you're wasting a ton of money because nobody's reading it. So we need to identify, when you're writing a headline, who your prospects are and the major benefit. This is going to apply to anything that you're doing. We're going to look at some ads in a minute that are some old school print ads from the 60s and from the 70s that Mel did. But we'll see that this applies on pay-per-click, it applies on your website, it applies on Craigslist ads, TV, you name it, this all works. So let's take a quick look at a couple of Mel's ads and what he's doing with his headline here. We've got a book, it's John Jacobs Practical Golf. You'll notice, of course, the title of the book is nowhere near the top. What we've got for golfers who are almost, but not quite, satisfied with their game and can't figure out what they're doing wrong. Now, this is a really effective headline for a couple reasons. It's number one, it's very specific about who it's targeting. If you don't play golf, it's not trying to sell you a book. This is specifically for golfers. Now, it takes also, that headline takes a classic sales technique uh, PAS, Problem, Agitate, Solve, and it does two of those right in the headline. Now we'll get back to that in just a minute. So like Mike was mentioning earlier, you know, Glazer Kennedy, they call it swipe and deploy, you call it adapt and modify, but the basic idea is you find a proven winning formulaic advertisement and see how you can copy it into your business. So here's a couple examples of people doing this today. There's a guy he's selling a business opportunity to contractors. Learn how to have a successful construction business starting today. Now he's got a, a pre-headline for contractors who are almost, but not quite satisfied with their present business performance. Can't figure out what they're doing wrong. It's the exact same thing. He's using that above his main headline, which is do you make these mistakes in your contracting business? Which incidentally, that's also a very formulaic, successful headline template. Mike and I uh, did an advertisement in our business, Direct Results Marketing, last month, utilizing that very same formula. It was an oversized postcard, a series of three, brought us a three to one return on investment, and it said, do you make these six mistakes in your marketing? Same formula. Well, here we have a Twitter. Someone's sending it out in a tweet, business world, for business owners who are almost, but not quite satisfied with their Twitter marketing. I'll show this works in any business. I don't think it gets more strange than this business, personally. They made a slight modification, slight adaptation. Breaking news for people who are almost, but not quite satisfied with their candle making skill. I happen to think this has some really good copy following it here as well. It says, are you sick and tired of struggling? You feel frustrated and in the pit of your stomach, you know you can be making candles, but you just can't figure out what skill is missing or what you're doing wrong. What if you could be making candles from the comfort of your home today? This is candle making. Okay, but listen how exciting they make that. Now they're using something that a contractor has used. They're using something that um, marketers have used and something that was from the 1960s.